Hello everyone and welcome to the first ever Halo Tips with Trank. If you don't know me, hi! <laughs> I'm Trank. I'm a professional Halo player and captain for Team Senex and EU team. Uh, I also stream at twitch.tv and I just love Halo in general. I've been playing Halo competitively since 2009. I've made videos and streamed for years now. Uh, well, I've streamed for about one year, but that's not important. And if you're interested in finding out more about me or my... Uh, my past with Halo, you can just check out links below to see gameplays and so on to make sure I'm not a total dingus trying to make some uh, tutorials or something like that that are completely void. So anyways, uh, today's episode will be about setting a standard, not a standard, but setting a foundation of stuff that I will be mentioning in this series in the future. Now exactly where this, this series will go, I'm not sure. As you watch some gameplay in the background that are just random clips. Um, uh, this might go into, you know, analysis of your you guys' gameplay that you send in, and I can tell you what I think and what I would be focusing on improving and so on. However, this one in general will be about improving your individual game in matchmaking through mental, uh, your knowledge of the game, mental setting, and instincts in the game. This will not be about 4v4 competitive matches where there's team against team of good players. This will be about random matchmaking, how you can improve individually. So this is the first episode will be this. In the future I'll think about or talk about other stuff. Now, how you can improve individually. A lot of people think that individual is just, you know, your aim. Uh, how you call out and how you aim and how well you can do from that. However, the biggest Probably the biggest weapon. No, you know what? I'm just gonna say it. the biggest weapon you have in Halo is your brain, your instincts, and your knowledge. Um, when you communicate, and the reason communication is so important in Halo is that you create a mental image of the battlefield per se, so you know where people are, and then you can act on the that intel, and uh, based on your the information you get, you decide what to do. Now making the right plays here, and uh, when to do what, that's the most important part. So, I got a couple of clips here that I want to show you, some examples. And uh, this first one will be on uh, narrow CTF 3v3 level high, 50 high MLG, um, where I'm searching with Liam here, or Godshot, who is my teammate on Team Xenix. I'm playing on Lurking Mars 2 for 1, an account I was leveling up for a viewer on the stream. And as you can see, this, will, this is not competitively setting at all. It's a 3v3 game, and uh, this is just something that's in Halo 3. It'll probably not be in Halo 2 Anniversary, but whatever. You know, this is about mental, individual game, and, and in 3v3's individual game is so important. Because almost all the rules of uh, normal Halo in 4v4 is completely erased. So, I'm going to go through this entire clip, which is from now until the end of the match. So, I respawn, top mid with my team, and this is just a generic firefight for top mid control. Uh, we are uh, lucky enough to get a good enough team shot and get all three dead. Now at this point we don't have anyone ready to cap the flag, or pull the flag, so I nade the flag to make sure they don't spawn here, and go in for a pull. Now at this point, I know at least one, and as you can see, two people on the other team has spawned. I have a teammate top right, which is good, and one teammate in the lobby. My teammate calls out that they do in fact spawn on cannon. I see a guy lift, and I know the other guy will push me here. So I drop the flag and throw a nade. He throws a nade. Now that nade will probably hit me and uh, made me one shot or kill me. Instead, I leave the flag as bait. They have to recover this flag because it's the last cap. And I go back to get a flank going. Now at this point, you know, I have my teammates both top mid. Uh, I'm not sure what this guy's doing. This guy didn't have a microphone, which leaves a blind spot in our team. But uh, one guy lifted. As I said, they have a guy at their snipe, which was the guy that I uh, got called out. And one last guy is probably going to be lobby. I can uh, I can assume that he will be in lobby because one guy lifted, one guy went snipe. The latest guy that will spawn there will probably go top mid to try to get top mid control. So I go for a flank here to kill that guy and maybe also get behind this guy. I get a bloodshot there, there's nothing you can do about that, that's just online Halo 3. I drop a nade, hopefully make him weak, and I go back to snipe to see uh, if I can get a pincer uh, movement with my team. Where we can pinch them and get a, fire, uh, a crossfire so we at least can trade one for one or kill them and survive. 
uh, at the same time see the lifter on our flag and call that guy out. So now we have information about where all the all the players are. Uh, my teammate here picked up this guy as a kill, and they also called out that they got the other guy. They haven't gotten him yet, but there's two v two v one, and they already put shots on him. So I can safely assume that they will be able to kill that guy. And as you can see that they do, uh, but the last guy cleans up our teammate. Now, there's a 50-50 chance here of my teammate killing him or not. But I just start running the flag and then based on what happens, I can decide what to do. Now I see my teammate get stuck. There's no point in running this flag. So I go for a challenge on this guy. There's no reason for me to not do, do that. Just try to kill him. I get the kill, as you can see. He throws a nade and tries to get away, but it's futile. And at this point, I have a choice. I can go down and try to go for the cap again, but that would be a bad idea because uh, this guy has spawned, and he will most likely spawn flag or backstage based on the fact that they did already spawn cannon and we've killed them all. So he, if he spawns flag, they usually go snipe to, and he has to recover the flag, and you can do that either from snipe or if he goes through lobby and recovers it through the floor from their hawk. Now. If he spawns lobby, he'll spawn lobby and go top mid. If he spawns flag, he'll either go lobby or go flag to snipe. No one will be cannon. So I safely assume that they will spawn there. I jump cannon to get a flank going. Now I check their snipe and I see a guy there. I can easily go for this kill straight away for two reasons. One, that grants my teammates uh, the chance to get top mid control. Because they will focus on me, even if I get this kill and die. My teammates will get top mid control. So this is all about, you know, being annoying and making the uh, enemy focus on you. Based on your knowledge of the game, you can do this. And at least get control for your team and then maybe work your, work your way from there. This second kill is basically just luck. He misses his beat down, I hit mine, and then I can clean him up easily. So that's a double kill and I can go for this flag again. Nading first to make sure they don't spawn there again and then a nade on back lobby. So I just pull the flag here. And at this point, I would guess that the last guy was in their lobby, but he's on their cannon. Uh, the nades don't hit me and I can back off, waiting for my teammate to push in, giving him that call. He pushes in, I can start running the flag. Now at this point, uh, my teammate chases after the guy power up, which is a, it's a, it's a fair enough good play, there's no reason to not do that. And this guy makes a good play in leaving my teammate and going for me. So I get shot in the back here. There's no way I'm going to survive this uh, going bottom middle. So I jump into R2 just to stay alive and uh, time for my teammates to come back. My teammate can put shots on the guy on snipe. Uh, maybe my uh, second teammate will clean this guy up on power up. If not, at least he will make someone one shot. Uh, so my teammate dies here. My second teammate is one shot. And at this point, I've jumped to cannon. I'll show this again. I run the flag. I get shot, I stay alive, and based off of the idea that they will know that I went up top, they will look for me there. So I jump cannon, uh, hoping that my teammate will kill him, instead he dies. Luckily enough, they push in to snipe, and as long as I keep an eye on that, I can get this flag lifted. As I get this flag lifted, I don't lift back with it, I would stay over here and be annoying for two reasons. One, sniper just spawned. If I can get control over this snipe, we will basically have this cap no matter what. Two, if I can be annoying on their side, they can't safely go for the recovery or push over. So, the my number one priority here is be annoying and stay alive. So I put shots on this guy, make sure that nade doesn't land anywhere like that can hurt me. Put shots on this guy again. Uh, I just want to back off here. I didn't know if that would kill him or not. It does kill him, uh, and therefore I can go for this snipe. Where the last guy is, probably jumping for the flag. He doesn't, but that's no biggie. I just make sure he doesn't go for that flag. So, there I see my teammate get shot. I'm not sure from where. I see my teammate clean him up. Just get two nice shots on this guy lifting, and then we have the flag secured. So, that's basically 100% uh, the individual knowledge of where people are going to be and how they are going to react to my actions gets us that game and of course the teamwork with my team where i call out and work with them so they know what i am doing and i know what they're doing i just want to
go fast forward through it again one last time to uh, to you know recap this. Uh, it's basically after this kill is the most important. Nade this, start running the flag, call that 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 out. My teammate comes through to help me out. I start running it, get shot in the back. Uh, I know my teammate pushed into cannon, so if I get shot in the back, then someone got past him. Uh, stay alive, decide to jump down behind them, because the worst thing that will happen here is this guy kills my teammate and then goes back here, in which case, you know, I die, but they will still not have control over the map or anything. It's an okay play to do because it's not a risky move in that sense. It's it's a win, win or okay situation. There's nothing to lose by doing this. And uh, one thing about Halo... Uh, that is really important is to make a decision and it's a 50 50 you know based on what the enemy will do so I drop down I pop the flag into the cannon and I just get information there's a guy here on their snipe there's a guy top med my team will hopefully get that guy and uh, another guy right here so put shots on this guy managed to kill him that's good Two dead, check that of course. Always remember to like check how many are dead so you can get information. Information is the most vital thing. And then just secure the cap by uh, looking at where my teammates are. So yeah, that's that. Now I have uh, one more clip here for you, uh, so I'll cut to that. All right, so this time we're on the pit and this is just a clip. This isn't uh, uh, an entire spree or a gameplay. This is a very, very short clip that shows you how uh, predicting an enemy's movement and an, an enemy's actions can help you out to do a clutch uh, in a situation. So, as I say, information and predictions are the most valuable and the most powerful tool you have as a player. And uh, here I just push bridge uh, to get information. Both my teammates are dead. I have one teammate pushing through uh, green, if I remember correctly. Yep. So, I think we can get a, a pinch movement here. Uh, one from each side, I push training, he pushes green, and we might be able to get this based off, off of the information our teammates gave us. I push in, I see this guy with the snipe, he's a little bit weak, I just want to clean this guy up. So I get that kill, and then this is the point where it gets uh, interesting and where I can teach you something, I hope. This guy, I see him jumping towards training. Now, my shields are one quarter. If I try to run away, there will be one shot to make me one shot, and then I will take a maximum of two bursts to my body, if I strong side, um, before dying to the third shot. That I will most likely not be able to get away. I could try to go for Cheeky under the bridge, um, but then he will drop, and most likely I wouldn't be able to either get into custom or jump back up. Uh, at this point, I had no clue that this guy was here, by the way. Uh, if I try to run to green, I will get shot most likely three times unless I manage to warrior it, which is a big possibility on Xbox Live, but it's not a risk worth taking. I could try to drop into a training pit, but then he would most likely just make me one shot and then nade me. Always presume that your uh, enemies have nades and that they will use them the way you would use them. If this was me, I made this guy one shot, I would chase it uh, to secure the kill and secure custom. So based off of what I would do, I can expect what this guy will do and predict him. So he, I know that he will land on bridge, I know that he will try to chase me, and he will probably expect me to either run, or stay here and like jump up and down. So I push back out straight away, I know he's gonna land in that general area, I hit my first shot, and then it's just about challenging his be and be as unpredictable and aggressive as possible. At this point, my goal isn't to kill the guy, but to make him as weak as possible, do as much damage as possible. Against a really good player, you'll probably only get one, maybe two shots on him, because his aim will be really good, and he will maybe even expect you to do this, because there's no other thing to do than dole out as much damage as possible. Uh, sometimes it's better for you to die than stay alive uh, to help out your team. So, I just hope to get as many shots on as possible, however, it cut... It, it, Takes him so off guard that he just misses his shots, and I get a crispy four shot on him to get the double, and then I play around with the custom for a little bit, which I didn't even know was here. <laughs>
So I'm going to play the clip one more time, and I just want you to see my movement and how I predict exactly what he does. Clean up the guy on training right here. I see this guy. One, two, three, four. And then that's all about, you know, your aim and how much you can hit. But if you look at him at it from his point of view, you know, you already have like three shots on this guy. He's going to be weak. There's no reason for you to not jump on this. He might get a nade on you, but if he throws another nade, then you should be able to get one, two shots on him and kill him before he can get the last shot on you. But then he just jumps out. Your aim goes a little bit wonky. You miss the shot, and suddenly you're four shot and you're dead. So uh, that's how being unpredictable and uh, knowing the movements of the enemy and the movements of yourself uh, based off of what you would do in any given situation can help you out as a player. Now, in this last clip, this is actually in Lone Wolves around level 45, and I wanted to show you this because this is about, you know, again, not the best players in the world, but it still shows you how you can manipulate someone based on the knowledge of what they usually do, and then go for a 50-50 chance of a success where, you know, you have the risk versus reward. Now, uh, as you see here, I spawn, and I go for the overshield, thinking that I might be able to get to it first. I don't. I drop to S1. He's going to expect that I'm going to jump and nade. Instead, I just go straight back out and get the back smack on him. I'm going to uh, show that one more time. When I miss the overshield, he gets it first. I jump down. Now, usually here, someone would nade. Maybe try to pick up the snipe and get a no scope on him. You know, get a double nade or something like that. Instead, I decide that I might as well go for uh, the risk versus reward. Either I die, I'm going to die here anyway. Or I get the back smack and I don't die. And I pop back out get the lucky back smack on him or you you can call it lucky but it was planned uh, the fact that I register as a back smack I guess you can call it lucky and you know there I, I take the lead and the overshield players out I secure the snipe and I go on to uh, get a nice little spree here on this snipe tower but I'm not gonna show you that so yeah that's about it I am um, this is already about 15, a more than 15 long, so I'm gonna, 15 minutes long, so I'm gonna end it here. Uh, if you have any questions, just post them down below in the comments. If you have any questions uh, or uh, suggestions of what I should cover in the next uh, Halo Tips with Trank, then just post it below. Uh, I hope this was helpful to some of you. I hope it wasn't dragged out too much and that I didn't do too bad. This is the first time I ever tried to do something like this, so please be nice to me. And I hope that I will grow and uh, do this better and better for each time that I try to do it and help you guys more and more. Because uh, most likely you're here because you love Halo and you want to improve. And uh, that's basically me. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you got something out of this. Uh, have a wonderful day and a wonderful life and I will see you soon. Bye bye. And then bang in comes it. Bye bye.